Welcome to Life in the Vine Ministries, Columbus, Ohio. My name is Janice Stewart. And we are so glad to have you join us today for our time of Kavanaugh, devotional time of reflection in God's Word. It is our prayer always that you are growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Messiah. To Him be glory both now and and to the day of eternity. Amen. That is from Second Petro, Peter 3.18. And we just always like to start with that and speak that and pray that over us because that is the hope we have and the confession of our lips today. If this is your first time joining us, our time together in this setting is a time of reflection in Kavanah. Kavanah meaning uh, worshiping, praising, the study of the Word of God with sincere feeling and direction of and from the heart to Him. And that's what we do in this particular setting of our times together. Before we get started, let us open with a word of prayer. Avino Malkano, our Father and King, we bless, praise, glorify, worship, and extol your name above every principality, every power, every dominion, and we declare together that you and you alone are Echad. You are the one true and living God. You are the God of Abraham, Yaakov, Yisak, and Yaakov. And we bless your name, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We bless your name. And we thank you, Ruach HaKodesh, for this opportunity to spend time with you in worship, prayer, and adoration. Guide and lead us as you do into all truth. Direct our thoughts and our minds as we turn our hearts devotion to you. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Amen and amen, hallelujah. So we thank you again for being with us. Again, my name is Janice Stewart with Life in the Vine Ministries and we thank you again for being with us. We do invite you to visit our YouTube page, uh, Life in the Vine Ministries. We currently are studying the epistle of 2 Petro, 2 Peter, and we would love to have you join us in that format as well. Today though, however, as I said, we will be spending our time of reflection and meditation with intentionality in Psalm to Helene. 103. Psalm 103 is a part of book four of the Psalms. In our study today, we'll be looking at a couple of commentary notes. The first one we'll look at, just to give you some background to the Psalm before we get started in our devotional time together. Uh, the first commentary note that we're looking at is from the Jewish Study Bible, Tanakh Translation. And that commentary note on Psalm 103 says that Psalm 103 is a hymn of praise for God's nature, his divine attributes, and his acts on behalf of Israel. It goes on to say that uh, Psalm 103 contains quotations from and allusions to Exodus and Isaiah. Uh, we read about this is my words now we read about yod heh vav -Heh's divine attributes in shemot exodus 34 verses 6 through 7 and we read about his acts on behalf of israel in the tanakh the hebrew scriptures the torah nevaim the prophets ketuvim the scriptures and the brit kadashah which is a new covenant we read about that throughout from the beginning to the end of the canon of the scriptures. The commentary notes on Psalm 103 also, which we're going to look at from the New Interpreter's Study Bible, uh, the New Revised Standard Version with the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is 
the apocryphal deuterocanonical books. Um, they are the the sorry the apocryphal deuterocanonical books of the official list of the books accepted by the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church in um, their list of the books of the canon. But you will not see these apocryphal books in the Protestant list of books in the canon, just to give you some background there. But in that commentary, which I found was very interesting, it reads that the this meditation, speaking of Psalm 103, telling 103, this meditation on God's goodness and forgiving love is framed by opening and closing calls by the psalmist to bless the Lord. We see the first frame in verses 1 through 2, and then we see the bookend to that in 20, verses 20 through 22, starting with, when we look at verse 1, 2, the blessing of Adonai, the blessing of yod vav starts from the interior being of the psalmist, and from there extends to the ends of the earth. All of creation praises and worships and bow down and glorifies our God. I think that is just such a beautiful picture of this psalm. And so the commentator's statement about the meditation on God's goodness and forgiving love, starting with the interior being of the psalmist, and extend into the ends of the earth echoes the essence of the first section of the first commandment given to the people of God. These are my words now. And Devarim, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6. And I will read that for us, verse, starting with verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love Adonai, your God, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. These words which I am commanding, let's remember these words which I am commanding you today are to be on your, let's remember, heart. Commanding, I am, which I'm commanding you today are to be on your heart, on your heart. Here, the heart and soul we see are engaged in fearing and loving yod he vav he with kavana, intentionality. So that's a little introduction to the psalm so that before we move into our time of devotion and we're going to look only at verse 1 today, we'll be spending the rest of our devotional times um, this month in Psalm 103, and so today, verse 1, but we will see what we have just explained and shared with you in this introduction when we look at verse 1. So let's take a breath, and I want to share something with you. We can only love and fear Adonai as we know him, and we know from our lives in particular that without knowing there's two, there's a greek word there's a greek word uh, gnosis and then epigenosis one is knowledge that we get from just learning we learn we get gnosis and epigenosis is an experiential type of knowledge and that's what we're speaking of here is that when we get that experiential knowledge of him of adonai we then can with Kavanah bless, worship, bow before him, lay our lives before him, proclaim his name from the inward man first. And then we're joining creation, uh, joining creation. We read many scriptures that we're joining creation and worshiping the one true and living God. So that gives us a little bit more of a background. And you know, as I was thinking, as I was saying that, and this also reminds me of a scripture in Hebrews 11, 6, that says, now without trust, in the English translation of the Greek of that scripture, it says now without faith, but I'm going to expound on the word faith here. It says, and now without trust, confidence, 
corresponding fidelity in obedience, it is impossible to please God. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. I want to share something with you before we move on. I was privileged to be a part of a course at the Messianic Studies Institute here in Columbus, Ohio. And the course title is Knowing God and Messiah Jesus, The Biblical Keys. In that course, it was a two-day uh, mini course, two hours, two and a half hours each uh, night, two, two courses. But in that course, in the introduction of that course, we were given um, in the course key course scriptures to knowing God. And those were presented to us to give us the foundation that would be uh, expounded on throughout that course. I will share those with you and I'm sharing them with you because um, it will help you. And if you have a pen, you might want to write them down as you begin your journey or if you're continuing your journey on getting to know God, Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus. Those scriptures were Yachanan, John 17, 3, which read, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, the one you sent. The other one was Exodus 34, 6 through 7, which we've already mentioned. And it reads, then Adonai passed before him, speaking of Moshe, and proclaimed, Adonai, Adonai, Yodei Vavhe, Yodei Vavhe, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth, showing mercy to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and sin yet by no means leaving the guilty unpunished, but bringing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children to the third and fourth generation. I will say that if we were studying that we could go, but that change in e Ezekiel, but that's a whole different study. And we know also from the Brit Kanishah that we each will be held accountable for our own sins. But I just wanted to say that we're, that's not what we're doing here. It's not our text for today, but I want to say that, and that's a different study. So to carry on from here, we mentioned above that Psalm 103, according to the commentary notes in the NISB, our, uh, the NISB, NRSV uh, version, translation of the Bible with the Apocrypha, is also commentary. Now, I mentioned to you again, I want to say this, I hope you were able to write those down, um, but the reason I mentioned to them is to help us to know, like I learned in that class, we can know God. We can know God and Yeshua Messiah. That was why I mentioned those. So now moving forward here, as we're looking at the commentary note that we mentioned in the NISB, NRSB with Apocrypha, Apocrypha, um, the commentary note, there is a commentary note on Exodus 34, 6 through 7. Um, and mentioning also Yaakov James 4, 8, which was a part of that list, which says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So Yaakov James 4 through 8 was also a part of that a list of scriptures that we were shared with. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And then we were also shared by uh, our instructor in that course, Yachanan John 1, 14, which reads, 
and the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. We looked upon his glory, the glory of the one and only from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then we were we we were uh, introduced to, and we we also were shared by instructor Yermahu, Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen, which reads, "You will seek me and find me when you will search." for me with, here we go, with all your heart, with all your heart. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and repeat those because I would love for you to have these scriptures after we do this class together so that you can also know for surety, like I learned in this class, that we can know him. And when we get to know him, we can do just like the psalmist. We can worship him with Kavanaugh, with Kavanaugh. So I'm going to scoot back up here and I'm going to repeat to you these scriptures before we move on so that if you did not get to write them down, you can write them down. And these are the scriptures that were presented to us in the class that I took at the Masonic Studies Institute in Columbus, Ohio, in a course called Knowing God and Messiah, Jesus, the Biblical Keys. And these are the scriptures that were presented to us. John 17, 3, Exodus 34, 6 through 7, just moving down here to the next one, I'm passing where I actually read the scriptures to you, Yaakov, James 4, 8, Yachanan, John 1, 14. And we're coming up here. Jeremiah 29, 13. So hopefully you got those. I'll give you a minute to make sure you have all those written down. Okay, now we'll continue and begin our devotional time here, now that we have that background, to begin to reflect with Kavanaugh on Psalm 103 and verse 1. Now, you may be asking yourself, why in the world did she give us all of that? Again, it was foundational background so that we can move into practicing this once, once we read the verse and to let you know that, yes, we can know and we can worship from the interior, the inward man, Adonai, because we can know him. That was why I shared all of that with us. And that is why I share those scriptures with you so that you can know, yes, I can experience this and I can know my God. I can know Adonai. We must begin the journey first by getting to know him. So in order for us to experience this type of covenant that we're going to read here in Psalm 103.1, you must decide to begin the journey of getting to know him. And the first way, of course, we know is through his word and through prayer. But just the fact that you can know that, yes, I can get to know him and I can get to know him intimately. And we saw that in Hebrews eleven six. just to repeat that again. This says, now without pistis, faith uh, with corresponding action, obedience, 
It is impossible to even please God, for the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. If you would like, before I move on, if you would like to know more information about the Masonic Studies Institute, please call or email us at the number that you see there on the screen, 1-614-532-0203, or the email address there, lifeinthevine at earthlink.net. And we can make sure that you get connected with uh, the Mason Studies Institute and learn all about it, the classes, the instructors. Uh, you can visit their website. Um, I don't have it here on the screen. It's um, the Masonic Studies Institute in Columbus, Ohio. If you want to Google that, you can also visit that website. The Masonic Studies Institute in Columbus, Ohio, or give us a call and we can make sure you get the information you need to connect with them. Uh, with that said, let's now turn our attention to Psalm 103. Hopefully you do have your Bibles there and we're going to uh, read verse one. We're just going to take our time today in verse one. And like I said previously, we will take the rest of the month, um, this month, during our devotional times in uh, Psalm 103. So here we go. Um, in verse one, we're looking at Psalm 103, verse one. So let us read Psalm 103, verse 1. I will say in verse 1, we are encountering David commanding his soul to bless the Lord. And I am going to read from the Tree of Life version of Psalm 103 and verse 1. Of David... Bless Adonai, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless of David, bless Adonai, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Just give us a minute to focus on verse 1. So we encounter David commanding his nefesh, his soul, nafshe, which is the essence of his vitality and his inner being, his insides, to bless, adore, on bended knee in an act of worship, yod heh Adonai, David's expression from his heart on bended knee as an act of worship towards yod heh vav -He is a tactical exercise in the commandment that we read in Devarim, Deuteronomy 6, 5. We read it at the beginning, but you can see here that just as the commentary notes that we read express that Psalm 103 is a continual or a commentary itself on Deuteronomy 6. We can see here the actuality of David expressing what we read in Deuteronomy 6.5. The Hebrew of Deuteronomy 6.5, and I'll just read four with it so that we have a complete um, a complete sense of what's being said in Devarim 6, 4, and 5. The Hebrew reads, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Veha Hafta Hashem, Elohecha Vechol, Vavechka Uvechol, Nafshecha Uvechol Modeka. So a rough read, reading English translation of that would be, and you shall love yod heh vav -Hey, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. Levacha in Hebrew is your inner man, 
your mind, your will, your inner man, your mind, your will. Remember we learned from the commentary notes, the JSP Tanakh translation of the Hebrew scriptures, that at the time of the writing of Tehillim Psalm 103 in Judaism, soul means one's being. And there is yet no concept at the writing of Psalm 103 or in Judaism at that time, there's no concept of the soul as being distinct from the body. It's the whole being, the wholeness of yourself, the whole being, all that you are, the essence of who you are. Judaism teaches that the body and soul are separate, are separate yet indivisible partners in human life teaches that the body and soul are separate yet indivisible partners in human life. Rather than imprisoning or corrupting the soul, the body is a God-given tool for doing sacred work in the world. It requires protection, care, and respect because it is holy. That is a quotation from my Jewish learning. Now, you can also go to Google My Jewish Learning, and that's where you can learn so many things of our Jewish, the Jewish essence of our faith. It's one place, but you can go there, and that is what I just quoted to you. It is from My Jewish Learning. So we can see the expression in Psalm 103, verse 1, of what David uh, was actually experiencing and doing as he was blessing and speaking to his inner being bless the lord all my wholeness my vitality my being my essence from the inward soul out that's what we're seeing here so you can you can see that this is uh as david did this his experience that he had with god over the years the knowledge that he knew of God, the walking that he had with God, all of this came from the essence of his being as he worshiped, bowed before, and humbled his soul before the living God. So you might be asking yourself, how, how can I practice this? Uh, how can I do this? How can I bless and adore Adonai with this kind of kavanah? How can I become, how can I become this person? It's a good question. And we see so far we've learned that yes, we can through the knowledge, our minds being renewed and the knowledge of who he is, like we saw in Second Peter. We also learn the, the scriptures that I gave you, the five keys that our instructor gave us from the course that I took. It is possible. And we can have this kind of common awe. And it, became, it is and can become a part of our lives in Yeshua. It doesn't happen overnight as much as we can see like David. It comes by years of walking with him getting to know him as we grow in the knowledge of him again second peter 3 18 we learn and living our lives as a living sacrifice to him that we read about in romans 12 1 and through via the ruach hakodesh he enables us to do this we can't do it on our own and like i said it's a lifetime uh walk and journey but yes, it is possible uh, with the help of the Ruach HaKadosh, with a mind and a heart determined that yes, I want to take on the yoke of Yeshua as he taught us, take up my yoke and learn of me. My yoke is easy. And so we have it, we can, we can do it. And from there, from the interior, from the inside, we can worship, glorify, and praise Him. Not just in song and praise and worship, but how we live, how we move and have being here on the earth. We live and move and have our being in Him. And that is worship. And everything we do is worship to Him. 
So I want us to first right now, just take some time, take a moment to reflect on what we've shared so far. I'm just going to be quiet just for a second and give you an opportunity just, you know, just for right now, just to reflect for a moment and just, you know, maybe take a moment to think about what we've shared. And, and as you're thinking, just ask the Ruach HaKodesh, show me how, help me to begin the journey if that's where you are, or if you're on the journey, pour out a fresh new anointing upon me, Ruach, and help me to walk in the knowledge of this truth. So let, let's just quiet ourselves and do that just for a moment. Thank you, Father. So now what we will do is we're just going to spend just a few moments before we close and just a little spontaneous worship. If you uh, are just beginning to do this, just in your own way, from your own interior, from your own soul, your own vitality, your own being, just wherever you are, just speak to Yodhi Vav He Adonai, right where you are. If you've been doing it, then you just pour out where you are. But let's just worship and bless him, bowing before him in worship and blessing his name just for a moment. Yes. Avinu Hakinu, our Father and King, the God of all creation. We bless your name. Holy are you. You're worthy of praise and adoration. Great are you, O Lord our God. We worship and adore you, the Lord of all human flesh. We bless you, the God of creation, the God of Abraham, Yisak, and Yaakov. Blessed be your glorious name for all of eternity. Your kingdom come, your will be done as it's being done in heaven. May it be done on the earth. We bow before you and worship you with our hearts bowed before you. In love and adoration, we see you high and exalted. We bless you and praise you. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed are you, our King. Yeshua HaMashiach. We bless and praise the name of our God, our Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord God. You and Yeshua are one, and we are one in you. You taught us this in John 17. So as an act of worship and praise and glory to you for the unity that we have with you, we bless, glorify, and praise your name. In Yeshua's name, Avino Malkina, our Father and King, do we bless and praise you. Amen. Amen and amen. Bless you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the time that we had together today and thank you for teaching us how that we can know you and how we can worship you with reverence and holiness and how we live even. We pray that this week that you will lead and guide us into all truth, that you will order our footsteps and that you will lead us to uh, the in the path of righteousness for your namesake and that we will put our hands to where you would have them to be practically, Lord. That you will manifest yourself in and through us today in the earth, in the world that we live in, in our families, in our homes, our neighborhood, Lord, so that the world will know that you sent Yeshua and that he is here via the Ruach HaKadosh as 
we live and move and have our being in him and through you and through the royal Kakodesh. In Yeshua's name, we thank you, Adonai, for those who are beginning their journey, Lord, that you will continue to draw them unto yourself, Lord, that they, if they are seeking after you and to know more about you, Yeshua, in your kingdom, we praise and thank you that you will draw them unto yourself, Yeshua. You said that no man comes to Father except through you. And so we thank you for that in Yeshua's name. Amen. We thank you again for being with us today. It was a wonderful time of Kavanah, devotion and meditation in his word. If you have any prayer requests, please call us at 1-614-532-0203 or email us at lifeinthevine at earthlink.net. Again, my name is Janice Stewart with Life in the Vine Ministries here in Columbus, Ohio. Thank you so much for being with us and may you have a blessed week as he leads and guides you into all truth. Shavuot Tov in Hebrew means to a good week. Shalom, peace, Kari Shalom, grace and peace be with you. Amen. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Uh-huh.